I'll use Maricopa County's DDMSW program to create, run, and present the results of an HEC1 model with five sub-basins and a combined operation at the downstream end, which is south here, and some comments in the file. So you can see how that's done also. I've drawn here in AutoCAD the major basin rainfall polyline, the sub-basins, the soil map, the land use map, and the time of concentration paths. My next step is to define some GIS data tables to attach to the polyline so that I can enter my hydrologic data that DDMSW will use to create the HEC1 model. And that sounds really complicated. So I wrote a program called DDMSW that I cover in other videos that I'll link. And I'll run it now, starting with the DDMSW copy command, which will create copies of all these polylines and attach the data tables to them, which you'll see is pretty cool, and I can enter hydrologic data. The first thing I'm going to do is make a, a little copy of this list of the maps that it wants so that I don't forget what I'm doing and uh, just stick it over here in, at the top and then I'll start working on it. The first thing I need to work on is the rainfall map and turn off everything but the rainfall map. All right, TC paths. Okay, now I can run DDMSW copy. Should just be able to hit the up arrow. DDMSW copy rainfall. Yes. Sub basin. No. Land use. No. Soil. No. TC. No. That's all we're going to do now. Is the rainfall map. So select the area map polylines. There's only one. And it says that it copied them, and I can enter the information. So, pretty good. Let's, ah oh yes, DDMSW tried to helpfully create a layer filter for us. So we go back to all layers and uh, star STRM, which was the filter I had before. And we turn off the, uh, the rain which, and the DDMSW rain, and we turn on our watersheds. And we go and we run DDMS W copy again. Not for rainfall this time, but for sub basins. Everything else is no. Pick objects. Select the polylines. And it copied them again. Okay, which one do we want to do now? Let me look at my cheat sheet. Land use. So I'll go to my star stream star again. I'm going to copy that. Click on all. Paste it back. Turn off this DDMSW rain. And turn on my land use. Now we're ready to run DDMSW copy again. Rain no, sub basin no. Land use yes. Okay, pick objects. Select the area map polylines. Why does it keep saying that? Well, suppose we had a really simple watershed with only where the same polyline was everything. Well, then we could just pick all these maps at once and then do the TC map polyline separate. So TC map and area maps are different. Okay, let's see. I just did... Let's see, land use, there it is. And I have rainfall, so let's, let's turn everything off and just see what it's done so far. No soil, there's my sub-basin, there's my rain, there's my land use. But I want, again, all, and I should be able to just paste in my um, filter. And the next one I want to do... I did land use, so now I want to do soil. So let's turn on soil. Eh, there it is. 
OK, and run the DDMSW copy again. Four, no, 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 yes. OK, and we pick the soil map. All right, now the last one we need to do is TC. So go through the same drill. Uh, turn off my layer, filter, paste in my, my uh, whatever, my search filter, and turn on the TC path. Turn off this rain thing. All right, those are my TC paths. They're not closed polylines after all. So I run DDMSW copy. I don't want any of these maps. I want TC. Now it's going to give me a different prompt because it's it's the TC map polylines. It's not area map polylines. It's not closed. It's open. And it copied them. All right. What's really cool is that all the line work I drew for my model has now been copied to DDMS layers. And each map has... GIS data added to the polylines. For example, this rainfall map has this data. I don't need to change it because base, major basin 01 is normal and rainfall ID default is normal. So I go to the next one. I'll show you what it needs. Turn off rain, go to subbasin. I'll pick one of the subbasins and it has this information. I don't need the area because that's automatic. I don't need the major basin because that's 01. All I need is the HEC1 operation ID for this sub-basin. And I'm going to do the same thing for all sub-basins. I'll next work on the land use map. What we need for the land use map is to put in a land use code from DDMSW. This area is medium residential, this is estate residential, and this is open space. And we need to get the codes from DDMSW. I'll open a random project and go to hydrology, land use defaults, where I can find Medium residential is code 140. Estate residential is 120. 140, 120, and then let's say general open space is 700. 140, 120, and 700. So I pick this one. 140. 120 and 700. Then the next thing I'll do is a similar exercise with my soil maps. Turn off my land use, go to my soil, and I need to, and I'll find attached to those a soil ID. So I go to DDMSW and I check under my soil defaults. And this is really fake. <laughs> so I'm just going to type 64, 50, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And uh, 64, 51, and I'll finish them up and be back. And with those done, the last map that I need to fill out my hydrologic data for is the time of concentration path. And for these, all I need to type in is the upstream elevation and the downstream elevation. The downstream elevation is 1220 for all of them. And we'll use varying 
upstream elevations for them. The length, the basin ID, those will be filled out automatically by DDMSW. And with all the hydrologic data entered and double checked, I'm ready to export these maps to GIS shapefiles that DDMSW can import. And I'll do that with the DDMSW export command. It wants to know where I want to put them, so I will bring up my uh, program, my video folder that I'm working in, go to the DDMSW Maps subfolder, copy that, and go back to AutoCAD, paste it in. It says select the directory and add an arbitrary file name. So let's see, if I go up, DDMSW Maps, and add an arbitrary file name, 1.1. .1. I'll say save. Hopefully that works. Is it doing anything? Uh, yes, one object of four. There it is. It's exporting, and it says four up. So it's, it's done a lot of stuff. I can hit F2 and see that it appears to have been successful. And if I go to that DDMS, whoa, there are a bunch of shape files. Land use map, rainfall map, soil map, subbasin, and TC. Now, knock on wood, I can go to DDMSW and start working there. I create a new DDMSW project for hydrology and hydraulics using HEC1 standard and YouTube project for YouTube HEC1. I'll use HEC1, FCDM, sea soils and lands, use no 18 rainfall, and a single storm. Since this isn't that complex and large, I'll use a one minute computation interval. It's improperly labeled tabulation interval. And I'll save, update it in case we thought we brought in new agency defaults. And Click OK, and the next thing to do is bring in the maps I created from AutoCAD. The first one I bring in is the rainfall map. I go to the folder I exported to, copy its path, paste it in to DDMSW, and pick the rainfall map, save and update. And hopefully good things happen. I see uh, the rainfall major basin over on the other monitor, and so that's a good sign. Now I bring in the other maps under the maps menu. I say I want to bring in land use soils and TC maps, not just the sub-basins. So we paste in that path again, bring in sub-basins, land use, we use land use maps for soils. We use the soil map. For TC, we use the TC map. And I'm going to use a natural uh, time area relationship for Clark because it's mostly natural in the upper areas. That's the largest part. Then I update and hope, fingers crossed, good things happen. I see a bunch of maps appearing over on my other monitor. So that's a very good sign. And once it's all done, it, I'm going to check that all my sub-basins and soils and everything really do exist in DDMSW. Then I'll create my HEC1 network. Uh, it's given me some errors that I'm going to recklessly or some warnings that I'm going to recklessly ignore, and I'll check my sub-basin. I'll check everything. Rainfall? I've got a bunch of rainfall. Soils? I've got a bunch of soils for one, two, three, four basins. Good stuff. Land use? I've got the 120, 140, and 700 for a few basins, wherever they apply. Very nice looking. 
sub-basins, one W1 through W4 with all their stuff. Boy, things are looking good. So now I go to HEC1 network and say I want to add my first uh, operation. It'll be in major basin one. It'll be sub-basin W1. Let's add another one. Save. And now we get lots of these. So I can say I'll add another basin under it. W2. I'll add a basin under it. W3. I'll add a basin under it. W4. Now, how am I going to combine all these? Well, I'm going to add a combine under W4. And I'll combine all four hydrographs. Um, save that. And then I want to add a comment of to this uh, combine. So I'm going to say add a KM. It'll put it right under the combine and I'll say combine. I'll put it in all caps since we are in heck one. That would be typical combine W1 to W4 at at Patton Road and 111th Avenue. So there I've got a nice documentation, comment, helpful explanation of what's going on. I could go to this first one and add another comment to, I could say, Let's add a comment to number one. Oops, I was on the wrong one. Let's see if we can get it on number one. Click on double one, add a comment. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just change the sort on this guy to three so that he'll be for W1. And I'll say West, West Watershed. Save that. All right. And I could do that. I could add lots of comments in. I say, at this point, I say create draft. And it's going to make, uh, it should be happy with me now. And so I'll try to go to HEC1 network again and create my draft. And I'll look at it. I've got W1, W2, oh, W1 has a comment, W2, W3, W4, and then my uh, combine says W4, and I didn't mean for it to say that. I should have said C1 or C4 or something like that. So let's go back and let's uh, edit that. We want it to say, I'll say C1. Save that, create my draft again, and check how it looks. W1, W2, W3, W4, and C1. Combine W... So I've got a good-looking HEC1 model. Now, I go to HEC1 model, and it wants me to try to do this without updating HEC1, just to see if HEC1 will run with some dummy data first. So I save this, I run the model, it runs it for six different return periods, and it apparently didn't have any problems. And I could look at the results, and they're bogus. And uh, so I'll go ahead and try it with HEC1 updated. Save, run the model, it runs six return periods, and we're just about done. Um, it ran all six models. I can look at the results. I get apparently valid results at the combination and the sub-basins. And I can look at the actual HEC1 output files if I want. And that is all there is to it. Thanks for watching.